And we are back. Dr. Ture, we know with everything in life, every plan, every goal, everything, everywhere we're trying to go, there's always challenges. What are some of the challenges, if any, that you have with the other um, seven men bringing this vision to pass? Some of the basic things with regards to getting gathering the history, because then we have to, we have committees here in the city. You just can't put a monument up. You got to then present it to them. They have to understand what the monument is about, and then also understand the importance of the monument with the accuracy with regards to the story. So that was one of the things. And then also the location of the monument. But what we had on our side, I said God God was with us with Mayor Adams in place, and that's what some of us said because he was the mayor at the time. That made it easier with regards to this. So he had already understood the importance of having monuments to tell our story. And so he was right there in the entire process. So he wasn't on the outside. But then also it comes down to the funding, the monies. Because that's a, you can't have a monument without having mon the funds, right. without having the dollars. And mm -hmm. so then that, that, that final push, that ultimate victory, that's when Lieutenant Colonel uh, Rudy Moise brought it about. So that's why I think those are the major things, the funding that was needed, and then also just having the vision and then being able to sell the vision to other people that they bought into it. And that's what happened. Wow, what a remarkable, remarkable story. You know, we're just, again, just so grateful. So it being here, you explained to me some of the challenges. What would you say was the time frame? Was this something you thought of three months ago? Or, you know, like the Wall of China and all of a sudden it was done. What was the time frame? We're looking from 2000, wow. 2000 to 2007 when this finally comes about. Wow. From 2000, so seven years. Seven years. Seven years. And that's why, again, it's the long process. The process of going down to Miami, mm -hmm. folks coming up to Savannah, mm -hmm. then us going to Haiti, uh, going right to the St. Mark, going to Port au Prince, meeting the prime minister there also, mm -hmm. Yvonne Neptune, and sharing with him what was going on, the delegation. We say the delegation. And sharing with people what's happened and having events in North Miami and then letting people know that there now is a partnership that is happening right here, wow. that we're going to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And so, again, 2000. 2007. Wow. It's just being steadfast. And now we said that's a part of the sacrifice, part of the, uh, the wonderful movement wow. to our story to be told. Which is remarkable. So now do you think they're teaching this in the schools here? And um, how do you think the tourists are rec uh, receiving it? Are they being clear on what this is, what it symbolizes? What, what, with the school system, still with, uh, with us, and I, I share this to people. Uh -huh. I say that most of us do not know, know American history. Uh -huh. We know American mythology. Right. Again, we know American mythology and we share that as opposed to American history. Mm -hmm. So when folks come out here, and that's the tourists and others who are uh, tour operators, when they come here and they start seeing this monument, they're like, wait a minute, I never knew the story. Mm -hmm. So for some of them, it begins to cause them now to explore more. Wow. And then, so the tourists who, comes in the, who will come in the Savannah today, mm -hmm. when they see the monument, they say, I never knew about this. Wow. And so for them, I see this now planted. For them not to go back home and not to go look up this right here or to show their friends the pictures that they see. So this might become something fitting that's mm -hmm. unique for us right here in Savannah, but also a world story, international story that people now go and look and say, wow, I didn't know that Haitians fought in the American Revolution. Yes, and Haitians didn't know some of them. That's right. And so now what happens, they begin to open up their minds. Right. So they now begin to have a, have a different perspective towards Haiti. Right. They start saying, wait a minute. We wouldn't be free in the United States as mm -hmm. a nation today if it was not for Haitians. Exactly. And I tell folks, that's what we got to do. We got to promote that and put that out there. Don't have any shame about that. Let it be known. Let it be acknowledged. Because when people begin to understand that, mm -hmm. they look at us differently. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Well, gosh, with all the different men involved with bringing this to pass, um, I would like to ask you specifically, what who inspired you to be a part of this? <laughs> <laughs> I have to go and say that it was tied to family. Okay. Being exposed to family, mm -hmm. uh, but them exposing me to history. Mm -hmm. and again, not mythology, but being exposed to history. Mm -hmm. So that piqued my interest and that desire. And so then I began to read these accounts of General Toussaint L'Overture, mm -hmm. Emperor Jean Jacques, Dessin the Magnificent, who he called Papa Dessin Jean Jacques. Oh, then wow. President Alexander Pétion and King Henri Christophe. Then I'm known about them. But then later on, I'm like surprised that, bam, and this again as a kid, mm -hmm. I find out that Haitians fought in Savannah. Yeah. So now as a kid, I'm intrigued by that. 
So I want to know more. Yeah. So I begin to explore more and begin to find out the stories. And then start finding out the ties of Haitians here, right here in Savannah, mm -hmm. who are now operating underground schools in Savannah to educate other Africans. That Haitians are right here now beginning to, to set the promise with regards to us, with regards to freedom right here. Mm -hmm. So all this now I'm saying, wait a minute. Haiti got a connection here. Yes. And so now just exploring more and then going on and then learning more about Boke Mine and then, Ooh. you know, Cecily Fata Mine and I'm throwing about Boy came on. And <laughs> so the it. connection. So yes. that's what happened. In fact, I tell you what occurred, may I ask, one of the first times we go to Miami, mm -hmm. there's a reception for us down there in Miami. Oh. <laughs> so Mayor Adams, when we're being presented and they're giving, doing, they're giving us some of the food, of course, uh -huh. Mayor Adams said, Jamal, do something. And I looked at him like, what? <laughs> Because I do living history. So yeah. then that's when I'm like, what? He said, do something. So that's what I did. I started talking about Bok Man. Oh. I started talking about Boke <laughs> Man. I started with Cecily Fata Man. I began talking about that. I talked about how people came together. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's what happened. I said, what's happening in Savannah right now? We've come together just like Boke Man uh -huh. to bring about liberation of a story. And wow. so later on, I had some of the folks there from, I, from Miami. Mm -hmm. They said, you know what? We were saying that the one thing missing here are the ancestors. Wow. And they said, as soon as we were saying that at our table, that's when you came on. So then they asked me to say, are you Haitian? <laughs> say, so there you have it. Haitians in the Revolution War that fought right here in Savannah will be back.